Ankoku Shinwa was a game I was really interested in trying out. It's an adventure game, but it's an adventure game with an odd hook. So when I got it, I put it in, played through the first chapter, and discovered why people give up on this game. And then it went on my shelf, never to come off until I made this video. Ankoku Shinwa was an extremely short-lived comic from, what else, Shonen Jump. It appeared across six weeks in 1976. So I honestly have no clue why Ankoku Shinwa got a game. My best guess is that Tokyo Shoseki heard that Namco was releasing a Devil Man game, and so they looked around for any comics that were similar horror stories from that era. This is also the last game by Tokyo Shoseki that we're going to get on the Famicom, which marks them as the first major publisher to exit the system. This game initially appeared on the MSX, and the Famicom port seems relatively faithful, although it does lose a bit of graphical fidelity. The story of Ankoku Shinwa is about a boy who has visions of demons from ancient Japan. These beings of myth are reviving, and he becomes involved in the investigation into what's happening. It's a horror story with a heavy archaeological bent to it, which actually makes it really appropriate for an adventure game. Except Ankoku Shinwa marries that adventure game to a really terrible action game despite there not really being any action in the original comic. The game plays out over eight chapters, and you start out by doing a very simple, very short adventure game segment that basically plays out the comic's story. And then as you conclude that, you're confronted by a boss that you fight in a side-scrolling battle. You have a sword that shoots projectiles, and one of your goals in every chapter is to power up the sword to deal with the next monster. Here's the boss of chapter one, and I'm going to start fast forwarding this for you. In the comic, the boy goes through a cave full of skeletons, and in a chamber at the end is this monster. Except it's chained to a wall, and so he just runs away in terror. And that's it, it's never seen again. Here, this monster is the only real stumbling block in the game. You die after a few hits, and there's no invincibility frames, but the monster takes 200 hits to die. I counted them because I was getting frustrated with doing this over and over again. If this monster kills you, then you have to redo the chapter from the beginning. So if you die, you do about five minutes of adventuring, and then you have about a five minute battle against this monster. It took me almost half an hour to get through chapter one. After that, things go much more quickly. The later bosses aren't damage sponges like that guy was. And they tend to have big blind spots or simple actions that you can take to trivialize them. They look very cool. The designs are taken straight from the comic, but they're a huge bunch of pushovers. I get the impression that they realized that the game was too short, and so decided to cram in some boss fights. And so none of them are designed especially well, or are really integral to the plot. The adventure segments in later chapters do increase in length, but not by that much. It only took me about three minutes to get through all of Chapter 7's adventuring. The adventuring follows the standard menuing system that's so familiar by now. You only have six commands. Push, use, go, take, look, and talk. And the game heavily restricts what actions you can take until you pick the correct one. As a result, the game is known for being extremely short. Less than an hour, even if you don't know what you're doing, assuming you can beat that first boss, of course. One thing I appreciate in the adventure segments is that there's little books that will appear in the status bar as you progress. If you see one of those appear, you're on the right track. I stopped at chapter seven because I needed to cook dinner, but if I really wanted to, you get a password after every chapter, so you can pick up from there. I wanted to get to chapter seven because it has an infamous scene you're talking to this woman from the ancient past who has slumbered inside a stone for hundreds of years, and then she literally falls apart on you. What I was looking forward to with Ankok Shinwa was an adventure game that had some cool monster boss fights, and it really didn't deliver on either of those. It's not horrible, it's just slight. The best thing I can say about it is that it introduced me to the comic. 
I think I'll spend the $3 to pick up a copy with my next order from Japan.